So today's big question that I am raring to answer is how do you get a driving instructor car without joining a franchise? And I remember sitting there myself thinking, how do I actually get a car with dual controls and is safe to teach in? And I had no idea. What is the secret? And sometimes those big companies can also be a little bit misleading into leading people to believe that their cars are the only mystical cars in the world that actually have dual controls and are actually safe to teach people in, which can be a little bit frustrating. But today, we are going to take those blinkers off and we are going to look at another way. But first, can I just say an absolutely massive thank you to Andrew Fish and Dylan, my newest Patreons. It means so much. If you'd like to contribute, please click on my Patreon in the description below, or if you'd just like to see some extra content. Let's go. So when training to be a driving instructor, myself included, where'd you start? Well, I started by searching in Google, how'd you be a driving instructor? And what comes up? Well, four or five of the biggest companies in the country that are nationwide. So what ends up happening is most people end up joining one of those. Well, that's great. The problem is those big companies are not so good at educating people of any other way than their company car. This more often than not leads anyone joining those companies to get themselves stuck in a two-year contract taking on the company car. For some people, this is absolutely perfect. For others, well, they don't have any other choice or are aware of any other way because no one's told them. Now we're gonna have a look at how you can get your own driving instructor car. Now I'm gonna do it step by step how I did it. I'm gonna explain which type of car I thought is the best and why I chose that car. It does not mean this is the right way. This just means it's one way and it's the way I chose to do it. And it's giving you an extra option to think about on top of just taking the franchise car. We're then gonna compare the franchise car to my car costs over a two year period and see what the differences are. So step one, I started searching for a suitable car. I planned to teach in a manual, so I knew it had to be a manual car. The only real rule with driving instructing is it cannot be a soft top and it has to be roadworthy meaning MOT, taxed, insured, etc. It can, however, be as old or as new as you like, within reason. I know driving instructors that have got cars that are well over 12 years old, and they have no reason or no want to change their car for a new one anytime soon, because why, why should they? And I'm just mentioning this because the number of people that ask me how new does my car need to be, well, let's just say it's a lot. I also knew I was going to be doing between 20 and 30,000 miles per year. So I knew I wanted a diesel that was going to do around 60 miles per gallon compared to a petrol, which could be around 30 miles per gallon. And yes, even though my car is stop starting a lot and I'm teaching people to drive, my car still does well over 50 miles to the gallon which is a lot more than a petrol car that I had for two weeks that was doing around 30 miles to the gallon. I found two cars, one was online. It was a higher purchase, meaning that you pay every month and at the end of the payment, after the, the contract, you own the car. Problem was it was about 400 pounds per month, which I really wasn't up for paying. Nice car though. Second one was a PCP. This had a higher interest rate but far lower monthly payments at around £175 per month. Now, I knew this was going to be tax deductible, so I wasn't bothered about the higher interest rate, but I was bothered about the lower monthly payment. So that's the one I went for. In case you're wondering, by the way, a PCP, by the way, means you pay a lower monthly payment. If I want to keep my car at the end of the contract, I think my final payment will be somewhere around £3,000. So I found a nice 2016 Peugeot five-door diesel. Pick the five door because I've got to take the kids to school every day and pick them up most days as well. And they're very big and they're chunky. So step three, long story short, I went to the Peugeot garage, I signed my name on the dotted line and I bought the car. I then phoned the mobile dual controls fitter, arranged with him to come and meet me at my old job. While I was at work, he fitted the dual controls in three hours, then drove home. Boom, done, car ready, let's go. If you're struggling to find someone to fit dual controls, by the way, just search in Google, fit dual controls, and type your area. Me, for example, I typed fit dual controls, Stoke-on-Trent. Look at the list of people coming up. Now all I need to do is pop to Halfords, get my L plates, get my second mirror, and I'm set to start teaching. Well, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Now, a lot of people learning to drive have said to me, but Josh, what happens if I fail my part three and I've bought this new car? And this is sometimes how companies actually encourage you to take on their car with the deal that if you fail your part three, you'll, you can just hand the car back. But let's say you did buy a car just for your driving instructing. 
And then let's say at worst case scenario, which is very, very unlikely, you failed all three attempts of your part three. Well, what are you going to do? Well, you're just going to sell the car. Done. Still doesn't mean you need to take on a franchise car. Okay, now we're going to do a comparison of my car costs over two years compared to taking on a franchise car for two years. So the basic cost for my car alone with nothing else is £2,400 over a two-year period. Getting the dual controls fitted cost me £350. Tires are generally supposed to last between 20 and 30,000 miles, which any driving instructor is going to easily do. So over two years, I'm going to need at least two sets of tires. Let's say I like using part-worn tires. I'm going to double this now just to be really mean and say I need 16 tires over two years. 30 pound a tire, you're looking at around just under 500 pounds, so 480 pounds. Gonna need two MOTs, that's 70 pounds. And then let's put some on for extra wear and tear. You know, when someone pops your wheel or when you just hit bumps too hard. Well, that's exactly what actually happened to me. I recently had a bill for 650 pounds, but that was with a service as well. Uh, but one of the joints on one of the wheels went because I was letting a student hit bumps far too hard in my earlier days. Whoops a daisy, don't do that. Then a second service on top of that for around 200 pounds. That gives us a total of 850 in spares and repairs. I'm gonna round this up to a thousand pound over the two year period, just in case I've forgotten any punctured wheels or anything else. And I'm only talking about my wear and tear here, guys. If you've got hundred driving instructors lined up and asked them the stories of how much wear and tear they've got, I'm sure you'd hear a few horror stories. I might have just been particularly lucky. Now we're going to look at insurance. So my insurance for the year is under £500. However, in your first year as a driving instructor, I know it can be expensive. So I'm going to put it down as £900 for one year's insurance. And for my second year's insurance, I've now got one year's no claims bonus. So I then put that down at £800. That's given me two years insurance at £1,700. This gives me a grand total of basic car costs of £4,300 for two years. If we add the insurance onto that, that gives me a grand total of £6,000 for two years. Now let's have a look at how much a franchise car is going to cost you. Well, one of the big companies at the moment is advertising a Peugeot 208 GT. This is the most basic option they've got. It is a brand new car. If you were to have the car alone with no franchise, no extra support, nothing else, just the car, you're looking at £112 per week. Now with this, you get tire replacement, windscreen replacement, breakdown cover, vehicle replacement, insurance, and that's it. So we know the tire and glass replacement is worth around £500 over two years, because that's how much it's currently costing me. Vehicle replacement, well, I've got that through my insurance company anyway. Breakdown cover, again, I've got that through my insurance company. And instructor insurance, well, we know over two years, that's gonna cost you around £1,700. So let's do the maths. £112 per week times 52 weeks of the year times that by two for the two years. That gives us a grand total of £11,648 for two years. Now compared to my car, which costs £6,000 for two years, there's quite a big difference, almost double the cost. Now the main difference here is the franchise car is brand spanking new. My car, when I bought it, was nearly three years old. However, for almost half the monthly cost, I will take a car that is three years old. There are also a few other things that you need to be made aware of. For instance, if you do decide to take on a franchise car, make sure you read the contract because if and when you plan to give that car back, you may very well be expected to give it back in the same condition that you took it in. What does that mean? Well, that means if you've scuffed any alloys and you're teaching learner drivers, or you have any paint chippings from stones jumping up, which are unavoidable, you will be expected to either pay for those or get them fixed, which doesn't sound so bad, but they really add up. You also need to be aware that if you are sick or ill, there won't be any forgiveness in your contract. If there's any long-term effects that affect your work, such as a lockdown, you will still have to pay your contract. Just remember, taking on a company car works for a lot of people out there, but just be aware there is another way. I am Josh, your online driving instructor, and as always, it has been a pleasure.